Things are going to cook up a little bit. They're going to heat up around here under the night lights of Concord, North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the show here in Pete's Race TV, the Race Tech Codings iRacing League and their Pro Series division. Now here on Pete's and Racing TV once more. I get everyone. I am Christian Gosset Shriver. Welcome back to the show as always. And as we get settled down into tonight's action, RTC Pro Series will have to take on Concord, North Carolina, Charlotte Motor Speedway and the tri-oval design track that is pe that is d devised and made to test even the strongest of drivers. No matter what layout or course they face, there is always the tri-oval that reigns supreme on this circuit. And right now, as we get ready to get to the action here, get settled down for the fights here tonight, we'll look at on the pole. Parker White, White Lightning himself, will be in the 95 on the starting lineup. His outside will be the 66 of Justin R. Smith. Run number two, it's 80 the X-Men Kirker in the 39. His outside is the 42 of Cole Williams. Run number three, it's going to be Brennan Kohler in the 36 outside. That'll be Chase Pre Pearson, the number 17. Row number four is Ace Booth in the two and is outside. It's Keelan Belsha in that 18. Row number five, Sartage Man will be in the 49. Is outside. It's Brady Burton Wild in the 44. Row number six, Team Store Patterson in the 11. Is outside. Mason Davey Chase and Thompson in the number 81. Next row on back and row number seven. Well, we're going to see it here. That will be Mike Cambeo in the 24. Is outside. The big dog there on the number six. Row number eight says Jared Darling in the one is outside Mitch Hobbs, the 89. Wild Stars will be in the row nine, Connor the Ferrari Chafari, and is outside Mark Lewis, the 84, with Jeff Ennis in the 68 rounding out your lineup. And as those famous commands can call, you start the engines up, you start the motors revving, you get this one on the crazy grid. It's time for some action here on Pizza Racing TV. RTC iRacing Pro Series right now looking to showcase their biggest, their finest, and the toughest drivers that dare take on the fastest cars and the toughest setups. Open setups here at Charlotte Motor Speedway can make for or make or break some races here. Will it make or break some hearts? Find out now as we're getting ready to go to the green flag. Time limit up. Laps engaged. Let's get to the race.
So they'll lead them off out of turn number two. They're out of the gate right now. The guys up front trying to battle for positions early, trying to get to the bottom or go to the high side quickly and make moves where they find it. You'll see a lot of that on these three starts. You'll see a lot of that on the starts in general. A lot of guys will try to find open areas, open planes, and try to see if they can get themselves out of the mess that is the tri-oval section. That front straightaway is going to be where most of the headaches are going to be wheeling in from and where the most of the guys are going to struggle to keep up distance, keep up the pace with. Sartaj, man, the number 49, trying to stay in there with Hayes in the booth and the number two, still searching for his first win of the season. Had a few bad breaks in between, had a couple of close calls, but still nothing to add on to his resume right now. Cole Williams had kind of the same circumstances as well. He's been kind of caught in the mix of his teammates' issues and his own issues as well. But he never seems to fail when he's got Nebula Esports around these parts. Jace Pierce right now, the number 17, up on the outside line, though. Got a little bit of a runoff on the 49th. Our Taj man trying to defend him off is a little bit of a tag there. Nearly comes off of turn two. Both drivers remain clean and, for the most part, keeping themselves out of danger and out of trouble. But, again, that could change in a heartbeat if you're not careful around these prices. Looking at the back of the pack right now, currently got a few guys really weighing off on the throttle, weighing off on the track. Jeff Ennis is one of them there in that number 68. Might be trying to stay away from getting himself into a bit of a hole early. But well, Mike Gambale in the 24 is still rocking that Hooters 24 machine. A little black, black and pink going on. You'll see a lot of that black and pink on here on the track tonight. Remember, folks, these drivers are raising money and raising awareness for Breast Cancer Awareness Month. They will be doing that constantly by driving pink cars out on the track, whether it be a little bit of pink and black, a little pink and gray and white or black. It don't matter. Anything with pink in it, they're representing out here for a solid reason, a solid cause. And that's exactly what they're up to here tonight. Whoa, as Mason Navy Jason Thompson gets a little too aggressive going into turn number one there. The Rep Sport, the Rep Esports machine did not get settled down as much as I think he was hoping for or as much as he was looking to get there. Meanwhile, right in the pack here, Justin R. Smith, the 66. Man, did he have a war on his hand back at the Irish Super Speedway last time out. He had a great showing up to the final last where, unfortunately for him, he ran into an old white lightning there in Parker White, managing to sneak across and take it away from him and the field. But he said to me earlier, he says he hopes he does not give them any more opportunities or chances to steal one from him. He knows he'll have to do a lot better than that to keep these guys at bay. I don't think I had to really say anything about the Iceman Aiden Kirk other than what has already been said. One of the toughest drivers to beat time and time again. He's been one of those guys you watch on the track and you just know he is going to have some magic to play out. Tony Westcott saying good luck to all drivers and Laurie Bennett Booth going to in, into the booth saying let's go Hayes Booth. Nevertheless, good to have you all on board here tonight as we get as we continue to flourish through these racing through through the battles. 140 laps here is what they've scheduled to fight it out with. The 44 of Breaking Burger Time, Wyoming, in the 5 Below Machine, trying to take down the Nebula Esports 49 of Sartaj Man in the 7th place spot. And Sartaj, I'm going to tell you something right now. I mean, one thing we heard from him earlier on is that he is very concise and very uh, strategic about how he hits every corner and how he hits every spot on any track. Tonight, I think it's going to be no different. He told me earlier he was going to aim more towards that bottom lane. He's going to try to stay away from burning up tires by having to drive it up higher, drive it in harder on the outside. He says, really, if you stay to the bottom, it seems like you can get magic to work down there. Well, he's certainly making a believer out of me. He hasn't really made any mistakes there while the 44 or Brady Burger time. Well, I'm tries to keep knocking him off that ledge. And again, they can bump a little bit going into the turn, but I would say going out of the turn, you definitely don't want nothing to do with it. 17 and Chase Pierce now sneaking his way down on the bottom lane, looking for a little stretch off. Maybe trying to knock down that 44 or 5 below is Brady Burger Time Wileman. and he's getting a good run, but still cannot get the car to come and play and come into banner. We're on board here with Mr. Pierce. And you can see the way he is moving that wheel around, how he's dead focused on trying to keep the power steering at bay, trying to keep the car on the right line, on the right side. Meanwhile, back up front here, I don't think I'd have to make any introduction for these two guys. You got White Lightning, Parker White, just absolutely dominating the race lead again. Still searching for his first season championship. I will not say a win because 
Well, he won on the first time we ever saw him in just extremely dominating fashion. Literally almost made the other drivers look like fools out there at times. As they put it, not my words, that's theirs. Brendan John Kohler, though, man, there's one thing you can never count out about him is that he is probably the, maybe if not the equal par of the 95, but also maybe kind of a little bit stronger in some regards. He seems to be a very tough competitor when it comes to that short run mindset, whereas Parker, he has a very distinctive long term, long run, long to the end setup and idea and how he plays it out. He doesn't like to try to overdo his corners. He doesn't like to try to, you know, drive it in too hard and, you know, end up burning up too much of his stuff. He's more considerate, more equalizing on his run and more equalizing on the battles he rages with any driver out there. The only thing he really struggles with is getting himself caught into lap traffic and getting himself caught up in the wrong place at the wrong time. Randy, too, coming on board saying, you better move that two up front. Well, I would say if you're moving the two, well, he's doing just that. He's up three spots at the moment. Currently, he went started in seventh. He's going up to fourth. Hey, look at this now. Moving up right to the 66, Justin R. Smith. You can see that Hayes in the booth in the number two. Driving a little too hard, though, off of turn two. Might have got a little too aggressive. Happens a lot with the youngsters here, and even myself included. Just the inexperience of reminding yourself you can't overdrive the corners too much. you got to stay in control with this track. I think I once said this about Charlotte Motor Speedway. I said this is the best track for a variety of track races, but it doesn't have a very specific theme to which one is the best. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, most people, when they think about Charlotte Motor Speedway these days, they think immediately the Roval. And I can see why. It's a very, it's a very strong road course race kind of ordeal. It has really shook up the competition, shook up drivers time and time again. But... I almost say like the actual oval itself, as much history as it brings to the table, it honestly is not as exciting as it once used to be. It used to be probably, in my opinion, one of the headline tracks when it came to the All-Star Race and the Coca-Cola 600. But to me, really, the only thing legacy-wise that the role that the oval has, the trial that is, is basically that 600. I don't personally feel like this is really the be-all, end-all of tracks that drivers need to get on a race like it used to be back in the day, back in the older days. And people can always make the assumption that it's due to packages, it's due to how the cars handle, it's due to a lot of things like the track even. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, we can we can try to point fingers all we want, but we don't know the full answer until we kind of put pen and paper together and then we literally start studying why everything was working out so well for the other times and what could possibly be brought back to do that. Now granted right now at the moment it doesn't seem like anybody's having too much of a troubles and we do have a little fierce little battle going on actually speaking of fierce little battle for the fourth place spot Justin R. Smith managing to sneak back ahead of the 39 of Nice Man Kirker and look at this T number two of A's in the booth and Cole Williams in the number 42 are going to go at it a little bit. Slight damage on the two, though. He might have got that from smacking the wall around a little bit earlier on. Nearly gets into it there with the 42 of Cole Williams coming off the turn two, though. Both drivers remain clean and very stable there in that turn. You can see Cole is desperately trying to make a move off, trying to get him back in his behind, in his rear view mirror. If there is one good thing, though, about a mile and a half is that if you get crossed over on the on the exits, you can always build speed up going back into the next century or the, ne or the next exit by doing a crossover. I can't tell you how many times I've seen literally a driver just get a little too confident with themselves and they'll start really burning up their tire, burning up their equipment, and then the last thing you know, somebody just kind of sneaks up behind you. You try to block, you try to defend, and either they do two things, they'll bump you out of the way and run, or they'll find a way to run you the cleanest way possible and just pass you without you even noticing it on these vinyl half-long tracks I've, I've seen anyway. And it's not just an iRacing thing. We've seen this a long time ago. Dennis Hansman comes on board here tonight saying, wish I could be out there. Hopefully next week. Appreciate it coming on board. Tony Westcott saying, hopefully the quarter panel doesn't cut a tire on Hayes' car. Well, right now the way Hayes is falling back here, I don't know if maybe that if that damage is cutting into it. There is the damage right there we were talking about for the Walter Esports number two. And judging by the way that fender is, it may be slightly grazing the tire. I don't think it's enough to burn it up and shred it completely, but unfortunately for him right now, he's not exactly catching up with the field. 
And speaking of which, Brandon John Kohler is the only one so far that's even had a, has even been anywhere near Parker White. Because he's still about two cents back of passing him. And Parker, I know, probably is just thinking to himself, how do I get rid of this guy? He's just literally like a, mon it's like a monkey on my back. I just can't get rid of him. To that, I respond, well, Parker, the only thing I can really represent to you is maybe you just got to try to drive a little faster out there, bud. And now that I've said that, I think most of the people that are in the race truck right now are probably a little mad at me because that is probably not what they want him to do. But back on board here with Gold Williams. So as you got Aiden Yiceman Kirker still in his sight trying to deal with him and the Yiceman designs. 39. And again, Justin R. Smith, man, that's one other guy I really just keep a closer eye on throughout these events. He showed that he can do a lot with the Passion Squad Racing crew, and he showed that he could really play in to really, in my opinion, just kind of what you know every driver wants to have, which is versatility. He's extremely versatile on the long tracks, which is obviously the the past the mile and a half. We're talking two miles of super speedways from the Michigans to the Auto Clubs to. Obviously, I racing Super Speedway, Talladega, Daytona. You're talking those kind of tracks. And then you're also seeing him on a mile and a half and even short tracks where he can hang up there with these guys. He can put up a little bit of a fight with them. So Dodge Man gets a little bit of a better runoff. I think that, too, his damage is slowing him down slightly here. That's one thing you don't want to have happen on these mile and a half or any of the track for that matter is have damage that is cutting into your speed, cutting into your run, and I think... The two knows that all too well. If a caution was not to come out, he's going to have to rely on either waiting it out for a last for the last pit stop and then use an instant repair, or if they don't even have them tonight, because I know they have times they don't even give them any, they'll have to char they'll have to find a way to charge up the rest. I will let you know for sure if we have instant repairs here later on. But judging by the way these drivers are going here, I would say more than likely, no, they don't. They do not have any uh, instant repairs because honestly at this point I would have think some of these guys would be a little more aggressive off the start. But they've been very calm, cool, and collective. And that's exactly what you're supposed to be as a driver right now. Laurie Benabouf acknowledging that Hayes is so loose right now. Basically what she's referring to, as you saw earlier on, the rear end sliding out from underneath. I want you guys to pay close attention. Here's a little track tech talk fan face fan little fiction for you. Or fan fact, I should say. What am I fan fiction? But that's not even true. But anyway, take a very close look here as we watch the par the white lightning himself of Parker White. I want you to pay a close attention to that rear end. Watch as he comes off a of turn number two this time by. Look at how the rear end already as he goes into the turn is very stable. It's very under control. Drives it off. And it doesn't even get loose. Now we're going to go back and look at Hayes. You watch Hayes now, and you can see the car, a little shifty, a little, little spin out of shape. You can see the damage not helping him too much. That right side is kind of hurting him a bit. But look at this right here. You can just see the car is already shifting outward and around. And if you watch what Parker White was doing as he was entering into the turns, he was keeping the car nice and stable and under control and not losing too much speed and rhythm. The problem is, is if you get slightly loose and you can't catch that car back online, it's a good chance you're actually going to hurt yourself for the long haul, and that's exactly what happened there. Tony Westcott saying is the number one car teammate of Hayes. Yes, he is. That is, uh, of course, Jared Darling there and the number one Walter Esports machine trying to take down the Nebula Esports here. Field continue to march their way around the track here, marching their ways around Charlotte Motor Speedway. Concord, North Carolina has been probably the toughest of tracks when it comes to mastering and it comes to keeping the distances and keeping up with the chains and times and zones and all that. But I will say, for the most part, since this track was created way back when, I don't think it really has changed all that much for the worse or for the better. It's really just been kind of... Let it just do its own thing. Let it be its own creation. And, you know, when they when SMI made that ruling and made that track, you know, very well known, it ended up being kind of what, what it is right now, which is a very 
smooth and delightful track to race on, but it's also a very hard track to master because the tire burning and tire burns that it suffers through constantly time and time again. However, there is a silver lining to all this is that this track does wield good results and good racing to those that want it. And obviously for iRacing wise, this is really one of the first tracks any driver starts on if you're on the asphalt circuit. What do I mean by that? Well, if you start up iRacing right here and now, I guarantee you there's probably three tracks you will be introduced to if you run. The first one would either be USA or National Speedway, or it would be Lanyard National Speedway for the street stocks, or if you're really lucky, you get to throw yourself on with the Charlotte Motor Speedway street stock races right out of the gate. And I will tell you this right now, man, this place is extremely tough to win with a street stock. I've only done it five times my whole career, and I honestly have a fond love for street stocks, and I have a really good understanding of how to work those things around this place. And it's not because of lack of training. It's just basically drivers are just so extremely aggressive around here that they forget that they have a whole race ahead of them. So whenever you hear, like, all oh, the rookie class kind of hurt me or something happened around there, or as we see a little bit of trouble down there for Hayes in the booth, I was gonna, I'll finish my statement here in a minute. Let's go take a look at the PTMS replay and find out what happened to Hayes here. Not something gone wrong there. Coming off the corner, looks like that little loose spot I was talking about earlier on got him big time this time. The PTMS replay shows all and tells all. It's not my magic ball, but it certainly is a crystal ball that shows the past, present, and future. And in this case... The future may look a little bit brighter if the two can figure out how to get rid of that damage and get that car back online. I feel like, oh, he's already spinning. He's spinning on the front straightaway, folks. Hold on a minute. While we were literally watching the replay, something gone wrong for the two. He goes crashing onto the front straightaway. Take a look at this. Oh! All right, I'm not sure what on earth happened there other than the tires just went straight right. And that was a very, very telling tale there. I don't really know what happened other than the we'll go back and look at this one more time here. Something bad, something really bad happened to Hayes here. I think he was trying to save the car and he might have ended up overturning it just a slight bit. Oh, right there. There it is. You see it. You got extremely loose coming off, and the natural reaction is to try to steer right to save it. It did not work that way. You see the flagman looking on at him, and he was kind of wondering himself, do we go ahead and throw the caution? The flagman said, no, we're not going to throw the caution. We'll let the drivers fight it out and go from there. But good sportsmanship on Hayes move to go back into pit road and at least just let the drivers have their way and have a little time for themselves. I know that's definitely going to be a frustrating factor for him and the crew, though, knowing that now he's kind of in a tough spot, a little trinklet of where he does not want to be. And I'll tell you one thing, man, turn four is a nightmare when it comes to trying to save your car off. Even in the slower cars, I'll tell you one thing, it's still just absolutely difficult and tricky to figure out. Now, you're probably wondering, oh, okay, what's so tricky about it? Well, again, you got to remember something. If you're looking very carefully at the way these drivers come off the entries and exits, they've got a bit of an uphill battle to a downhill slope. They've got to endure as the 11 of Storm Patterson, of, yeah, Storm Patterson here. He's trying to put some Nebula Esports boys up to the front here as you got the 89 Mitch Hobbs with Jared Darling right behind him. Walter Esports' is last hope in this case. But anyway, like I said before, you just got to talk about how it's how difficult it is again when you're running off that corner you just saw right there they kind of raise up a little bit lift up it's kind of like a formula one car where they have to get to a higher elevation higher landscape and position they then have to try to figure out how to maneuver everything in between to stay afloat and stay away from wrecking each other out or wrecking something in And the most difficult part is that when you get loose, you literally lose the front steering completely out because your rear end is already sliding out. So if you're going down that slope, you're already trying to fight the gravity, trying to pull you back in and around, and you're also trying to fight the car, trying to take you completely out of the race. It's just a counterbalance of control and stability, and unfortunately for some, they just can never get that break or catch a little bit of a lucky shot. The only time you're going to really see guys catch them 
with the slide anyway, is when they get off the corners of the of the uh, turns there in the halfway of the apex, and it looks like for uh, Jared Darling something gone wrong is for the number one. He saw him getting a little bit loosey goosey down there, coming off the corner. We'll take a look at the PC Mr. replay and see another one of this one. Hayes in the booth has parked it for the night. He says I'm done. I just cannot do it anymore, which is a tough break for that number two man. He gave it, he gave it so much work tonight. Lori, I do not believe they have a quick repair. I think they don't have it. And there it is right there. You just see what I was talking about. You can see the one of Darling. He gets extremely loose in that turn there. But this time around, he wasn't on the hillside coming down. He wasn't on the slope coming down. He was in the turn. So he actually had a little bit more room and a little more a little more to gather his thoughts and gather his momentum off and manages to save it nicely done. We'll go on board here with him, and I'll show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. And just to confirm, no, there are no instant repairs tonight. Look at this right there. You see it? You see the tar spinning a little bit, but he's able to slow it down, save it nice and conservatively. Whereas when you go down that slope, it's very more, it's a lot more difficult because you're literally having to fight the slope, gravity pulling you back down, and all the friction in between. That was your P10 Minutes Replay, brought to you in part by our friends over at Race Tech Coatings here tonight. And speaking of Race Tech Coatings, I think right about now, Brendan John Kohler and uh, Parker White have uh, coated themselves up a bit of a distance or two. I don't want to say this is a social distancing move because I think Parker White has gone exceedingly past the social distance method. He's already got about three seconds gathered on Brennan John Kohler as it is and five seconds gathered on third place, which is his own teammate, Gold Williams. I don't know what on earth Parker White, light, the white lightning man himself, has under that car sometimes or what he can do with that car but there's one thing we know he is certainly a wheel man and a half with so many other just breaks that he cannot get away with of course St. Kohler is a teammate too if I'm not mistaken oh alright so I guess there are two Walter Sports crews there tonight Kohler honestly he just kind of seems like his own man so I always keep forgetting he might be Well, right now, Kohler, three, three and two cents back of the field. Rest of the field kind of spread out a little bit in between. Lining it back off the corners here. Still everybody battling for their position, finding their moments when they can. Match Hobbs having to deal with Chase Pierce right behind him here in the 17. Tries to see if maybe he's got something coming up. You still see those pink skeins rocking around here, folks. And the Breast Cancer Awareness Month is in full gear and full pursuit. But another guy that's in full gear is that 17. And Chase Pierce, he wants a piece of that nebula, guys. Side by side right now, it is Hobbs, it is Pierce in the running, but Pierce is not able to build speed off the bottom lane like I think he was hoping for. Hobbs actually with a full throttle assault runoff coming off that corner of the entry and actually defending off a little block there. You see him going straight down. That's not what anyone else other than his teammates want to see. Sartage, Man, Storm Patterson, 
Emmett Hobbs all playing in strategy here as you see a little slowdown there for Hobbs. He almost spinning himself completely out. Keelan Bell shall fall from behind. And right now it looks like it's going to be a strategy game for these drivers here. They're trying to catch up to that 95. Canada Ferrari Tafari is going to stay on out. He's up 12 at the moment. He'll be our hard chart in the night if he can finish that spot here. He is currently started back from 17th. He's moved up into the fifth spot. While well, Chase Pierce, Aiden Kirker, and Cole Williams all try to march their way down the field and fight it back in. Everyone named Brennan John Kohler is a lap down behind him. So Justin R. Smith, Sartaj Mann, Storm Patterson, and all of them, they are a lap down at the moment. The big dog, Daryl Arnold, still rocking his schemes, rocking his look, rocking his love. He's always trying to make he's always trying to make a good showing of himself out here. Barker right now opting to go into pit road, which will opt Chase Pierce to take the race lead away from him. So we'll see what the 17 can start building up on the run while some of these other guys are doing it. Yeah, I think Chase right now looks like he's starting to slow up a little bit, maybe waiting for... And maybe waiting for the right time to go into pit road, waiting for his right objective here. We saw, though, when it comes to pit road strategy, sometimes that can get messed up because some of these guys can get a little too rambunctious out there and end up putting themselves a couple laps down, and then everyone's in a bit of a hassle and a huffle trying to get back into the race lead of things. Sixty-six. There you see that right being Mr. Justin R. Smith here. He's currently booking up fourth place, fifth fifth right now behind him being Cole Williams and Parker White back out already out on the track. He's already still about four and a half seconds ahead, and Chase Pierce is only about 16 seconds ahead of all things. You got to believe that is just not what the 17 has been thinking or wanted to hear from any of his followers, much as any of his crew members, knowing that he is so far close to the other. So far, Brendan John Kohler here now moving up into the top spot. Looks like he'll take it away here with Chase Pierce going into pit road. And everybody, oh, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. We've got one into the infield. Mitch Hobbs, the 89. Loses it coming off the corners of turn four. He's trying to save it, bring it back down. Gets it nicely controlled there, I will say. But the Nebula Sports 89 nearly losing it all there. And I'm not even sure where all that even began to begin with. 
came out of turn four and just completely spiraled out of control. The car just went for a little ride. We'll take a look at from the chopper cam here. That turn four tonight. I don't know who put grease down there on that eight, on that strat on that turn, but it's it's been getting a few of these guys. Man, Hobbs. I don't know if he was trying to think he was driving on the roval track like I talked about earlier. If he was actually trying to just mow the in care lawn service area and see if maybe there's something. And see if maybe he can get himself some free money for that, but uh, I don't think you're gonna do much with opening up your own lawn care service in the middle of a race, there, sir. Man, it's up right there for him. He'll have to fall back a few spots here and have to work his way off the corners yet again. And I gotta believe he's not too thrilled about that, having to frust the delivery of so many frustrations, so many things in between to have to deal with now. Back on board with one of our drivers here, Keenan Bell Show here in the 18, trying to gain his thoughts and gather his momentum back up. Spreading the distances out. While meanwhile, up ahead, the 39 of 80 and the X-Men Kirker has finally caught enough to storm Patterson. Patterson trying to move it on the outside line, trying to see if he can give himself a nice little breathing option of room. Patterson moving the chains and continuing to stay right in the line of sight, but A and Yanksman Kirker was able to just pound the throttle and go up to the top five as we're about ready to reach halfway point here in just about 10 laps or so. Race fans, I can tell you one thing here. This has been pretty much... been a hard run or two, a hard runoff for as many of these guys out here. Many of them not. Many of them struggling to keep up with the tire distance and trying to keep up with the speed. Tammy Reed coming on board here tonight saying go Keelan Belcha, Lori Bennett saying oh well good luck to the rest of the Walter Esports crew and Westcott saying well now I don't know who to cheer for. Uh, Tony if I'm going to be honest with you, uh, there's plenty of guys out here to cheer for. A lot of these guys are pretty good in their own right and Brandon John Kohler unfortunately though is finding out just how good one of them is here that he's got to deal with right in front of him. Not going to mention names, you can probably guess who I'm talking about but Kohler is on the attack. He had the race lead for a little bit, but White decided to uh, play a little uh, cat and mouse, and he decided this time that he will be the cat, and Brent and Kohler will have to end up being the mouse. And just like that, the mouse gets trapped, and the cat runs off with the bounty, or in his case, kind of plays with his food a little bit and just kind of leaves it alone. That's about the best way I can explain it here. He is just never lets up and never lets off on anything or anyone. He will just give it everything he's got and then some. And the Iceman Kirker is still trying to keep up there with the Iceman Designs 39. Maybe hopefully fight it out there amongst himself and his pot and his peers. The Storm Patterson and the 11 and Jared Darling continue to hold up the top seven here. Keelan Belsha and Brady Weileman. And Connor Trafari also in that same Eclipse zone.
Yeah, I got, I'm just gonna go referring back to what, you know, Smith did, of course, at the yeah, iRacing Super Speedway, but, you know, he, he just, to me, seemed like that night, he was completely unfazed and unaltered with anything and anyone. He only knew one thing, and that was basically just keep up the distance and keep up the runs and stay focused on every little detail he was at when he was on the track, and, you know, again, I just feel like he never really lost sight or lost mind frame of you know, what he was after and what he was going to get himself into when he went out there and raced. And, you know, he did a great job about that and really gave himself some promising showcase throughout the event. You know, of course, obviously, he just kind of fell short to that four-wide salute to the finish there, which, again, probably one of our crazier finishes we've had in quite some time. It's been a while since we've had a three-wide or a four-wide finish here on PT Racing TV to the line, much less at a play track. Coming out the clutches now here. A little bit of a battle between this 44 and the 17 for just a brief minute. Brady Burger Time Weileman going up high side while Chase Pierce goes down low. Says, say, let's see where this one goes. And he says it's going to go forward. It's going to go straight. And that's exactly what he wants to know. While Khan, the Ferrari Jafari will try to have to hold back a little bit and hold the fight on downwards. Ferrari right now, it looks like a little bit of problems down there for Brandon John Kohler. He's had to go into pit road, something gone wrong for him. Something seems to have been a bit off there and it seems to be giving him a bit of fits here and I think he knows it all too well. And Trafari trying to defend it off there. The lot nine, though, is in trouble yet again. And, man, he just cannot catch a break. But the youngster will always have that race win at Watkins Glen. No matter how you look at it, he is still one of the toughest drivers to knock down a few pegs when it comes to Pro Series. He can beat you out when you least expect it tonight, though. I think it's going to boil down to more of just control and conservation for him and his crew. Knowing that he's got a lot, it's taking a lot going down, and it looks like Brendan Don Culler is out for the night. Hayes Booth is out. Mason Thompson and Mark Lewis there are both a lap down at the moment, while Parker White, Justin R. Smith, and Cole Williams continue to just hammer the throttle in and give themselves a plenty of breathing room. Hold on a minute, though. We got trouble down there. Mitch Hobbs has come to a certain halt. He's got to refire. No caution is out. But if you're screaming down, but if you're screaming down the front straightaway, and there's no, and we have no idea what's going on, then we need to go and find out for ourselves. So here is the PT Mr. Replay for Brandon John Collar. We'll start with the onboard camera here. And once again, it's our old friend Turn Four kind of coming back in. But this time, I think what happened was just overdrove the corner a little bit, and actually got it too low. It just got him into the apron, got him a little hard off on that spot. Ends up finding, his, finding himself in a bit of a mess coming out that spot, out that turn. One more look at it from the number 89. Man, the Nebby Lee guys, other than, and I don't know, excuse me, the Nebby Lee guys have been pretty dominant throughout these races, throughout these events, but at the same time, like I said, they've only really been able to outdo themselves and beat themselves out of times where the other teams have been just trying to figure out how to master the corners and master the tracks. This certainly was a similar circumstance here, but yeah, I think in this case, though, everyone is still a fair game and fair play when it comes to racing these parts of the town.
Sartaj, man, here at the 49, Ebula Esports, Toyota Supra has been pretty much kind of playing vacant around here when it comes to staying out of trouble, staying out of issues with his teammates here tonight, and I think it's probably for the better. Coming out of the corner now, Aiden the X-Men Kirker managing to make his way around there from Cole Williams. Williams will have to hopefully hold him back a little bit and fire him down. Kirker, man, he's starting to pull away slightly here. Again, there's, there's a reason why they call him the Iceman. They call him that for a bit here. He loves to put everything at full gear and full mask. Here and now it looks like Kirker's going to have to work around some lap traffic, though. Again, maybe the sports crew member there, the 49 Sartage man right in front there with Cole Williams behind. Laps continue to wind down. We're down to nearly only about 60 to go. And this has pretty much been one of the longer green flags since they've had in a while. I remember back at Bristol Motor Speedway, they had an extremely long, you know, stint of a green flag run. And I don't even know how they did that, but hey, it ended up working out all right for them. End of the zone right now. Sartage Mann and Cole Williams pacing their way through. And trying to see if maybe they can do a one little runner off or two here. Maybe see if there's anything left in between. Storm Patterson, the only other driver here of the Nebula guys, continuing to make his way in with the top five spot. Jared Darling actually moving back into the sixth place position. So at the moment, might be a little bit of an opportunity for him to strike it big and strike some luck here if he can find some more momentum. But I think he's going to be in a top five spot. That's probably going to be his more realistic chance here. Looks like coming up from behind, though, here comes Chase Pierce as Keelan Belcher, the youngster, once more as well, making a, making another return to the PT Racing TV showcase as well from the RTC I Racing League Pro Series. He's been kind of a frequent key, he's been kind of a frequent one around here, and he's got a bit of a fan base going as Tammy Reed continues to root him on. Lighting him back off the corners here into the turns. Keelan doing a great job holding off his run, and keeping hold of the lead. Well, that's of his lead lap anyway when it comes to six but Patterson the problem with him is is if he gets one little runoff on that bottom you know the passion squad is going to have a little more work to do and I think the 17 knows what's in his sight right now which is that white lightning himself right behind him he's starting to move the chains in just ever so quicker Pierce going to try to evade and escape and run off quickly but it's not enough time here comes the 95 Parker White has already maneuvered past many drivers. He's already burrowing and building the speed just the way he likes it. Chase Pierce here at the 17, country trying to hold off Parker White. Man, Parker, though, if this is one thing you don't want to do right now is be stuck in that spot. 
And again, I, we've seen it before where lap traffic has always been kind of a factor, kind of been a fit issue for many drivers out here. Probably the most, yes, probably the most glaring issue I've ran into or I've seen before on the show or even on a real life television was probably back with obviously Harvick and Elliott, which that's a story in its own right. But if you wanted to go a little bit further back, I mean, could even say back in 2020 when they returned to in real life NASCAR racing. We had at Darlington, there was Jimmy Johnson ended up getting caught up in lap traffic on the last lap of the fi of the first stage. Really, in my opinion, costing him what could have been his last great opportunity to finally pull away with a W to end out his season and his career. In my opinion, it would have been well worth the price of admission for that. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, you got to go out and still race your race and do your thing. And, that's exactly what these drivers know how to do, but the gap between Justin R. Smith and Parker Wyatt, literally just in a sounding 18 seconds, that's just ridiculous. Hey, Iceman Kirkner maybe looking to possibly knock down Smith here and maybe take him for a ride or two. Kirker looking to get more momentum built off. Got about a tenth of a gap gained on Smith. Great stuff here, seeing that he can really hammer the throttle in and keep himself in control of his own destiny. That's why when you got to be that's why you got to be careful with that steely eyed little one here. He can always be bad fast and be bad tough to beat on the track. Patterson right now at the moment he's up six spots and believe it or not he really is actually our hard charge of the night he started back in 11 he's starting to the end fifth place here the only one that's even close to him is kind of the Ferrari to fire with five with he's down and being 12th place so it's kind of hurting him a bit points definitely matter and so do uh, everything else in between and you cannot forget that when we're running those black when those pink and black schemes around here you know there's other things that there you know up front it matters as much as it matters to all our friends and family out there that constantly survive and have to fight off that nasty little disease of breast cancer. And thankfully, though, with the aware, with this being the awareness month and being a self, and being really more of a kind of a coming out party for many of these drivers to be able to showcase their love and their support to all their friends and family and their loved ones, even their moms and grandmas and everyone out there that is unfortunately dealing with this situation. They really are doing everything they can to just get something going and really just showcase that we're not in it alone no one ever is and we're going to do this to the very very end of it all it just is an absolute blast calling these races when you can see just how much love and support come into this You can see right behind him there, that number 24, that being the 24, obviously, driven tonight by the Mike Cambeo here. Cambeo, I was trying to train a thought for a minute. When I hear 24, I'm thinking either William Byron or George Gordon for some reason. Uh, I know by all means that uh, we don't have not, we do not have Jeff Gordon on the track here, folks, unfortunately. Trust me, we wish we could. We hope one day we can get some more NASCAR drivers in here. It would be awesome to have. But I don't think we're going to have to hold our breath on that one for a while. Cambeo, man, still look, look, perking those hooters, and I get to tell you right now, those eyeballs certainly uh, tell a better tale than I think most fans can. Mark Lewis there up on the outside line. We've seen him uh, popping in from a time or two here. The 84 kind of giving himself back in the run here. He's trying to hang in there, trying to give himself some breathing room, if you will. And again, it just seems like he's not had the, uh, the most circumstantial of shots here and everything, so...
Firing it back to the corners and on the ends here. It is still the 84 of Lewis looking to master out the track and master out the run. Right behind him, though, you see Jared Darling starting to move the chains up a little bit. Cole Williams did lap him. He'll get his lap back from him, but, uh, yeah, get, good luck getting back your lap from Parker White again. This dude just, for some reason, just does not know when to just lay off the throttle. He just, I don't think he ever had, I don't think he has a button in there that says, okay, relax a little bit. Let the uh, guys that are not as fast catch up with me. I don't think there's a button in there. This definitely isn't Mario Kart. Now, speaking of Mario Kart, a little side action there. Drifts him right off the wall. There's the 84 of Mark Lewis, thankfully, though, is able to hold it down. And Lewis could have been in a much worse spot there. But thankfully, he was able to keep himself in play and keep him on line with the Pro Line 84 Supra. That could have been dangerous, though, man. He's, he was in a bit of a pickle there. That same spot's where we saw Hayes Booth earlier on get smacked out with some damage there on the car. And when he did... You remember this fondly, but the right, when that right side took damage, it slowed him down and ended up costing him so much time and rhythm that it ended up just breaking his whole race out entirely. Hopefully that does not happen to Lewis and he can finish it out with only about 40, without 45 laps remaining in this one. 44 to go at the moment. Well, it might be about 43 as soon as uh, Parker comes across the stripe here. I think his goal is really to wall out the whole field, and right now he's got one more driver to go. That's his own teammate, Cole Williams. Right about now, I would probably not want anything to do with my own teammate, much less wouldn't even be thinking about what's coming up on me. And actually, there he is right there. You saw him entering in turn three. Well, Parker White's already on the back straightaway. He's coming in quick. But you can see the car is starting to fade off slightly. It's getting slightly loose here. So I think he knows what's coming next. He's going to have to shift her down and just get into pit road. That might be the only opening these guys get tonight. Every time he enters into pit road, I swear that's like the only chance you get. It's like you either get one break or one move to make it work off you and make, it, and make everything else come into play. But this has not been the same way here. And Cole Williams heading into pit road. Chase Pierce, Parker White. So far, that sad part is Chase Pierce really just got the race lead. Parker was coming out of pit road by the time he came around, and he's on a fresh set of tires with five seconds to gain. We're down to only 40 laps here, folks. And Pierce, no, no offense to Pierce, but you can already tell this is not this is not looking good when you see this coming up. See, he gained a lot of ground on White and got past him, but. Uh, you look at lap 98, then you look at lap 99, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> when you see that time right there, that has got to be the most horrifying thing I think you can imagine, you even dream of, or you even want to think about. Like, I don't, unless you're literally on the last two laps and you got one chance to block him, I would not envy being in your shoes, and I think part, I think Chris is very, very well aware of that. White will return to victory for this top spot here. I mean, at this point, like I've said, I've probably made this joke a few times, but at this point, the way we're looking right now, they, Parker could literally probably have a cup of coffee, watch the whole Godfather trilogy, and probably, he probably could play the whole GTA trilogy, and he would end up still finding a way to win this race out. He just cannot, so he just cannot get off his tail. He just will not let it go. Hey, nice man, Kirker. I mean, I'll tell you one thing. He talked to me earlier about this as well. He said. Yeah, like, there's just guys out here that I know are faster than me, but that just makes me want to work harder. But it seems like every time I work harder and I keep making silly mistakes, like, I just can't seem to figure out where I'm going wrong and what I'm doing bad, and it just, I cannot get it dialed in when I'm on the track. He says I can pretty much hang with most of the drivers and most of the field, but when it comes to long-haul observations, I'm not the best at it by any means, he says.
So moving it way down in line, back on spot here. Mark Lewis still trying to hang on, trying to keep up and catch up with any of these guys here. Something, nothing to really just kind of prove himself that he can hang with these guys. I think is really what he's all about. And he has showed he has speed and he can hang and he can definitely drive it off. But I think overall his biggest issue has been basically keeping up with the distance and keeping up with the di with the long runs versus the short runs and again that's nothing on him obviously but it, it is very difficult lining on back around now Jared Darling actually moving up into the third place spot if you can believe it he sees a lap counter he knows how many laps he's got left to complete how many laps he needs to get done on this track yeah, I got a feeling he's probably very happy about that here. 95 has a wicked good car, and Tammy says, oh, if only, Tammy, I wish I could say he just has a wicked good car. I think he's got more than just a wicked good car there, my friend. I think it's kind of uh, almost unearthly. I think, I'll be honest with you, I think the only way that you can probably knock him off, I don't really think you can knock someone off with that kind of speed. I think you literally have to get Michael Myers out there and just slash his tires up there. I think it's the only way you're going to actually stop him. Pay no mind to the car. I would just say, just get, I would just tell Michael, just get the tires and go for it. Just go for broke if you had to. That's maybe the only way you're going to slow some of these guys down. And these, again, these are top-notch drivers, again. Aiden Kirker, he's got a 3,380i rating. Fat, he's extremely fast with safety rating at 3.97. Jared Darling, he's got a four point, he's got a four five thousand, 4,506. And again, these are extremely good i ratings because Mark Lewis has only a 971, and then an average of this would be like what Jeff Ennis has, which is a 19.45. And I guess you would say Daryl Arnold with 2.2251 on their i ratings would be more conservative, but. And then you got guys like Cole Williams. They got a 5,337. Justin Moore Smith, 52.14. But then at the top of the mountain, again, you got a 7,000 IR rating with literally an A-class license to his name. That is just ridiculous, ridiculous. And beyond me, I can't even figure out or fathom how he does it. And remember, folks, as well, if you are just tuning in for the first time on PC Race TV, we appreciate you coming on board and hopefully give you some more action as we progress through these races and these events. But if you would, be sure to uh, like and follow us up here on our Facebook and then subscribe onto our YouTube end. You will be able to catch this race in its entirety and all that in the Clyde Def Clear defecation you see right now, as well as being there forever. You will never have to worry about it going away like, unfortunately, some of our other broadcasts have gone to the wind of the dodo bird. Thanks to Facebook, they've kind of deleted them, and we have no idea why they did that, but there's not much we could do about it, so we ended up deciding that we'll go with YouTube all the time. And I think it was probably the smartest decision, because ever since then, it's been a much more smooth sailing experience here, I would say, for everyone else here at Race TV. And also, it just gives, it gives the fans and friends a little more, you know, viewership, and gives them a little more chances to actually go and watch these races in a much easier format. Taking an easier format here right now. 21 seconds ahead. Still gaining up on him. That 95 of old White Lightning. Meanwhile, Justin R. Smith actually is gaining a little bit on Aiden Iceman Kirker. He's only about five seconds ahead here. Smith knows at this point he's only got one thing he can do, and that's just pretty much get back up to the front and get back into this. That's really his only option he has. He has no other chances. He has no other ways to move his move back into the fight back into the zone he knows he's in trouble he knows he's in a bad spot and this is not the way he wants it to play out he doesn't want this to happen but he knows he's going to keep going rick kirker jr coming on board saying i wonder if he'll pass post-race inspection <laughs> uh rick i'm not answering that one that's all i'm going to say if he doesn't then i guess we figured out why he is so fast that's all i can mention down on the front straightaway, though, Chase Pierce has now made the move ahead there of Keelan Belsha, the 18 machine. 
Ball's back one spot here. We'll see if Keelan can build a little more bottle off and bat charge him off out of turn two. Did not get the run he was looking for there, so he'll have to rely on drafting for Chase Beerus. Gone to the Ferrari. Ferrari lies away next here. He's currently been holding up seventh place, but he's in a bit bad spot here. The 18 of Belcher now sneaking his way back off for the bottom lane, moving it right up the chains, and around they go up on the back straightaway, charging ahead. The 17 of Chase Pierce now lays in wait. And Belcher is actually starting to get a little bit faster here. Actually got a little bit on Pierce that time around, so he might have a shot to get him here, but Storm Patterson is the only one that Pierce is worried about, much less Belcher. Also, I just got word here from race control here tonight, or not race control, excuse me, I'm a producer here tonight, that uh, we do have a special broadcast coming your way tomorrow evening. We will have a, a little showing here from a, from a new league we've never seen on PC Racing TV before. So if you guys want to make sure you catch that and tuned in with us, you can go ahead, obviously, and like follow us here on Facebook, but head over to YouTube and you can subscribe there. You'll catch all the action is there as well. And also, if you're at it, you never know what kind of news we'll bring to you. So if you're on our Twitter handles, you'll know what we bring. So be sure to follow us on Twitter. And while you're at it, well, just head over to Instagram. Because we got an Instagram page, too. Why not? Well, Darling, I'll tell you one thing. He was probably trying to figure out why did the car get all of a sudden it tip top out of shape. Because he just spun her right out of turn number two. Sent it down to the back straightaway, down to the bottom lane. Was able to bring it back up. But again, the speed's just... Tremendously giving him a hard trouble and a bit of a heartache here, if you will. And whatever run that uh, Justin R. Smith had right now on Kirker, that pretty much went the way of the Dodo Bird because that's gone. 20 some odd laps left remaining, and the Iceman 8 and Kirker is just, uh, at this point, I think he's just hoping. He's just hoping that he doesn't get lapped down, and he just wants to make sure. Parker does then just completely destroy this. He's already gone back to back. He's gonna go trip he's gonna triple K here tonight. And the funny thing is he is really yeah, he locked in the fastest time, but not by very much actually. It was only by about nine hundred nine hundredths of a second. His 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 fellow driver there, Justin R. Smith, actually got him almost edged out, but a thirty point four five there by Parker White was able to knock down thirty point five four of Smith. And then, obviously, long-term wise, that's not even a question. Smith desperately, I think, is just desperately trying to hope and pray that the inevitable does not happen to him or his crew. But it's looking more and more like that will happen with only 20 laps remaining.
while the field makes their way around continuously here. Chase Pierce, Chase Pierce still trying to hang up a little bit. Maybe get one last little runoff here. Maybe get something going on Storm Patterson because Storm actually is now in the line of sight. The 11 is under attack here from the 17. Pierce trying to Pierce trying to gain graph momentum, trying to also gain cornering momentum. Again, it's extremely easy to miss your corners and miss your turns here. But it really, I'd say the biggest thing of all is those tires. If you get those tires in jow just right, you can make anybody bend at your will here. Smooth runs off the surface and smooth battle off the corners. Once more, Pierce is starting to defy the gap and start to defy the track here. You can see the time gain zone is extremely high here, and Patterson knows that all too well. Pierce is right up in between the mix, in between the shots. This could be his golden opportunity. Distance is right now not too far off. Oh, hold on here. They're working out for Jared Darling, though. Sneak his way back in. Looks like he'll try one more time to get his last back and maybe get one last chance at taking home at least something other than what he is right now, which is top 10. Mike and Bay and everyone behind him. And kind of a rough shot him in a rough spot here, to say the least. Man, Darling, though, give him credit for credit. Dude, he's just muscling through the field. This is what fresh tires will do for you, by the way. You got a fresh set of tires and you got a fresh car to your name. That will help you out big time, and that is exactly what we just saw there. He'll mark his, he'll mark his territory. He'll actually get around the big dog, Darrell Arnold, here. We're coming on the front straight away to the tri oval. To the tri section here on that entry in. Last-minute opportunities coming up for anyone that wants to take it here. Patterson and Pierce is the only real battle going on, though. Daryl Arnold kind of getting in the way of things here. Maybe a little bit of a trouble nuisance for there for the 11. Patterson trying to stay maybe within range of catching the draft and maybe keep up the speeds to keep away from, from Pierce. But Pierce, again, with those tires and that draft line, it's a, it's a deadly combination. And if he gets it dialed in just right, he'll catch it before you know it. If you guys want to know just how the heck these guys are literally tearing up their equipment as much as they are tearing up those tires, you can see the bumps and all that runoff they get. You can see that the can see the suspension kind of jumping around a little bit there in that 17. That's why these guys are literally tearing up tires so much. All the bumps and all the ripples effects actually get that nice little curve edge of the tire ripped shredded off without any grip of the treads. The asphalt, the asphalt just pretty much makes it pretty much into an ice skating ring to get things speeds off of. It's, it can build speed off, but it takes a lot longer and it takes a lot more work to do. Whereas when you're on a fresh set, you can have a little, you got a lot more tread to it, your name. Here we go now, Chase Pierce engaging down the back straightaway. Going to make a runoff for that back shot. Loading it up. You can see he's cocked, locked, and ready to rock. Rest in peace, Scott Hartsock. Coming off into turn three, though. It looks like the 11 of Pier Patterson able to master up a little bit more momentum. He keeps himself in the distance line. Seven to go. Pierce looks like he might be slightly fading to me here. This is not looking good. Oh, as I say that here, he actually just found a whole bunch of speed and momentum as he makes it right around Darrell Arnold. Yeah, he is right there now with him, and Patterson knows it. But again, he is going to have enough time with the draft, with the dirty air and that filtering through. There's really not much to talk about in the race league, guys. I know you probably want to hear about what's going on up front, but there ain't really much. Lily Justin R. Smith, who's in third, is about to be lapped in by Parker White. Aiden the Iceman Kirker, if he's not careful, he will be a victim as well. Cole Williams and all of them have been lapped down, and they are not even anywhere near any drivers. White is just really looking to lap down the entire field before this night is over with. I think that's his ultimate goal. 
You might as well call him the Thanos of racing. He just wants to see the destruction of the universe, and he doesn't care what way is awake for him. Smith, though, man, I'll give him credit where credit's due. He is defending. He's blocking as much as he can to not let White have his way. But I think White is just like, fine, I'll just do it myself. And just kind of wait it out for either the moment or he'll just, you know, make sure he can get up with the positions and just keep his race and safety brigade. Or he'll just go up top side and see if maybe he can make a run off there, but that did not look to be the case here. Four to go. We'll turn three to go this time. Bye. Oh, kind of the Ferrari Safari up top side, though. Three widing out of turn four. Everybody comes out clean, thankfully. The 95, Parker White trying to hang on. He wanted to come back here and get a little bit of revenge and get things figured out more. Two laps remain now, and right now, it looks like maybe Smith might be able to uh, keep Parker at bay for once. Storm Patterson has now actually moved ahead of Chase Pierce. Pierce is not having enough of a run here. It looks like the dirty air might have affected the uh, 17 there at Pierce, and that might have actually cost him more time than I think he realizes as we bring it down to the white flag this time by. White flag is finally out now, and this one, well, unless something crazy happens here, I, I'm not going to try to count my chickens till I have, but Parker White has just pretty much destroyed, annihilated, and taken everybody for the longest of rides and the longest of battles. He'll lead them off, coming down the back straightaway, down through into turn three, and then straight shot it out of turn four. Old White Lightning returns to the stage and wins at Charlotte Motor Speedway. You know, he may not have accomplished his, his game goal, but uh, he certainly has accomplished one thing, and that was really taking the entire field under his wing and taking him out entirely. With one snap of his gauntlet, Parker White Lightning just said, uh, I have done my job here. Kyle Camper coming on board, literally just hearing that last sentence I made. I think he, uh, I think he'll agree with that one here. But nevertheless, we'll t let's take a we'll take a look at our drivers here in a minute. Let's go ahead and take a look at the race results as uh, Parker decides to do a little few burnouts down here. Yep. I can tell it, but I really don't think there's anything I could say here. Just look at the results and look at everything we got. That's as far as I can tell you guys. White wins it handedly. Kirker somehow, someway stays on lead lap. So did Justin R. Smith. Cole Williams down one lap, but then Storm Patterson and all them as well. Chase Pierce and Patterson actually doing a great battle at the end there. Patterson winning that one out, though. Keelan Belcha, a good, good runoff for him. Eighth going to counter the Ferrari Chafari. Ninth goes to Brady Burgertown Wileman and then 10 to Jared Darling rounding out your top 18 tonight that did run. Jeff Ennis was not in the play tonight, so he will end up walking away with that here. As we now showcase to you our top five drivers in presentation, it's time to talk with the top three. And looks like they'll hang around here a little bit, just trying to showcase off a little bit. All right, folks, time has come. Time is planned out to be. It is time to hit it up with old Justin R. Smith here. Let's have a listen in with the number 66 driver. As he joins me down here, as he continues to have a little bit of fun off here, maybe just looking to park it down here in Pitt Road. Smith, quite the showing for you and the crew here, but thankfully he managed to defend Whiteoff from going a whole lap down from him tonight. Uh, yeah, there's just, like, nothing you can do about it when somebody's that fast. Uh, uh... I'd have been a lot safer. I could have battled Aiden for a second, but I, uh, I spun in her in pit road. I forgot I, I backed my brake bias way up and uh, locked him up on entry and slid it in. Luckily, I didn't speed and 
but I mean, it still cost me probably about 10 seconds, but uh, yeah, overall it was a good finish. It was a good uh, first time podium for two people in Passion Squad, so I'm happy with it. Certainly for there, there. I mean, you know, uh, definitely could have been a little bit more for you and your team, I think, if it were your rafter. But hey, at the end of the day, you still had a great battle and a great race to the end. So I got to ask you, is there a walkaway third? Is there anybody you want to thank here for that one? Yeah, I think, uh, thank Aiden for doing our cars and we raced hard together. Um, other teammate, Keelan, he had a really, really good race tonight. Um, we we're all in the top seven. So that was a really good finish for all of us. Uh, Thank the RTC for putting on a good league, putting on good races. Uh, thanks to everybody tonight. That was awesome. We went cost free. And, uh, it's, it's a little too rare these days, no matter what you're doing, if it's official races or league races. So that, that was nice to have. So, yeah, thank all those guys. That was awesome. Hey, ain't that the true. But nevertheless, Smith, great stuff and great showing here for you and the crew. All right. Thank you, man. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Smith here coming on board here. We'll now talk in with the Iceman Aid and Kirker and uh, – well, the wee Iceman cometh, but it was not the way I believe you were expecting it here, sir. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it was... I could give you really a rundown of the race, but I can give it in three words. The Parker White... Oh, wait, four words. The Parker White Show. Um, he had us covered today, for sure. Um... I mean, do we really but, need to say anything else? <laughs> yep. All right, guys. That's the end of the broadcast. Thank you. No, <laughs> no that's um, my job. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, I mean, seconds. It's our uh, uh, second second place finish of the season. And uh, it's been a very rough season in the Pro Series and the Next Gen Series. I haven't won crap. And... Uh, just uh, good to get another top five. Good points day. And uh, just, yeah, try to get him at Indianapolis. And hopefully uh, we can finish behind him by like a quarter of a lap this time. Not almost the whole track, but <laughs> we'll see. I think it's only a matter of time you'll figure something out down there and get it all dialed in. But nevertheless, here, Aiden. I know it's been a little bit of a rough, long night and a rough way to go, but hey, you're still taking away a second place finish and obviously a points get. So who do you want to thank you for that one? Uh, want to thank the league, all the admins. Uh, they put in a lot of hard work to make it what it is. I want to thank um, Passion Squad Racing, Justin Keenan. I'll thank Tyler too. He's not really running with us anymore, but I'll thank Tyler because he is. Uh, once a passion squad driver, always a passion squad driver, or passion squad driver. Uh, I want to thank, oh, I was going to thank Iceman Designs, but that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I want to thank you for broadcasting this deal, putting the Parker White show to everyone's living rooms. And, uh, I want to thank my family, my mom, my dad, my grandma. I think they're watching downstairs. So hi guys. I want to thank my girlfriend, Emma. She's watching as well. Thank you for the support, everyone. And uh, thanks to all my friends in the sim racing community uh, for all the support as of recent. I know I haven't really been bringing in the results that uh, I'm used to, and uh, nobody's more disappointed about it than me, but we're trying to fight a way back up to uh, our uh, previous potential. For sure there. Well, nevertheless, man, hopefully everything will... Uh... Even out over time, I would say, between you and the White Show, and we'll see what happens. But nevertheless, Iceman, congratulations, and we'll see you, sec we'll see you next time here on the PTRS TV show. All right, thanks. Hey, the Iceman Kirker, ladies and gentlemen, and rounding out your field here tonight, oh, might as well just call it, it's the White Lightning Show. Parker, I think you were the host, and you were the one with the most, and at the end of the day, you literally just scored probably another destructive, dominating performance. I called you the Thanos of iRacing tonight. I think you know why, though. Oh yeah, um, before this race, uh, I did a ton of testing. I'd say more testing than I've done um, before. It was mainly just because I made a spreadsheet for myself and I wanted to kind of put that to use. So uh, I put my times in on that and I just, I ran, I would say about 150 laps before I really um, found something. Like I was just running laps over and over just running 20 lap runs and I couldn't find anything. Uh, then I found a little something after like 150 laps, but it wasn't much. So I knew I'd, I wouldn't be like the best <clears throat> the best here tonight. Uh, I didn't really have much handling on the long run, um, not even on the short run. Uh, 
and from what I saw, I drove my teammates set up, uh, or it wasn't the one that they ran, but it was a version of it, and uh, I would say I like that one better, but I just wanted to run my setup because I wanted to see how it would compare to everyone else, so uh, when we took the green, I was able to keep the lead, uh, hold off Brendan, because uh, I knew he'd probably fall off um, just from past races, and I had him to about like a three second lead before pit stops and then i think cole got uh he hit the wall in turn one um i'd say that he was probably going to be my biggest competition because he had a really good setup and um once he got through the traffic that he was battling with on the start he would be really fast so um i had about a five second lead on him when all that stuff happened uh and then from there i was just like all right it's just gonna be a race between brendan and i uh so i just made sure i didn't speed on pit road didn't make any any mistakes on Piro just to um, make sure I wouldn't have to pit again and go a lap down. Um, so I didn't make any mistakes on pit road. Then Brendan left mid race, and that basically just left uh, me to not make any mistakes at all and just don't get wrecked. So that's what I did. Um, I was the handling was really bad on the long run. I'm pretty sure that's what everyone was fighting. I just had to completely wheel the car through the corner because it would be tight some corners, loose some corners, but. Uh, I don't know. I'm just glad that all that work I put in before the race uh, paid off, even though I, I really feel like I could have uh, put a better setup into it. Uh, putting a better setup into it, and yet still, I, I honestly don't even know what, what else you could have done other than just literally just completely tormented and destroyed this entire track here. But nevertheless, uh, White, you definitely walked away with another W and another victory here tonight, man. So anybody want to thank you for this one? Yeah, just uh, thank you, Christian, for the broadcast, everyone that came out here to race tonight. Uh, all the admins of the league for just allowing us to race here. It's always a fun time. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, North Source Racing for that really fast setup, uh, SRD, and Sima Studios. All right. Well, nevertheless, Parker, you're walking away with another W, three in a row for you. And we'll see if you can do four, Pete, next time out. But, Parker, appreciate your time here tonight, sir. Congratulations once more. All right. Thank you, Christian. Ladies and gentlemen, your race winner here tonight, Parker White, Old White Lightning, takes home another W. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to wrap it up here tonight for the Race Tech Coding iRacing Pro Series. But tomorrow night, we will see a new league come to town, a new league come to church. I believe we're headed to Texmore Speedway, so t stay tuned for that and to watch the race there. But from all of us here at Pizza Race TV, we cannot thank you enough for your support. We will see you guys very, very soon when the green flag flies.